uh, take a picture with all of you and I'll send an email saying that we're extremely happy and uh, you work very well. And, uh, uh, regarding measurement that what you asked in the program is made, it's important that for the CEOs outside, everybody understand big data stuff. Yeah. And you yeah. need to have grids. Yeah. And the potential is there, mm-hmm. and the progress is there, but you need to have that grid to continue. If you would actually sort of, you know, um, do like a one page sort of, you know, what would the initial looks <coughs> So I didn't need to come for a very long time. In fact, I'm a back. Why? Because um, even though we actually got into 80% numbers in terms of financial inclusion, uh, kind of from 26 in 2006, um, even though we have amazing examples, I thank you very much for sending all your bios, and I was very excited to see everything you do in the field. Um, and you are one of you know 300 fintechs that are around, so very vibrant financial technology sector. Um, there are cracks. There are cracks in the system uh, for many reasons. First of all, the affordability of the amount of money is a very good thing. I'm probably going to have that uh, some of issue. Um, so we'll be speaking about this uh, this week. We've actually been seeing um, that a lot of uh, people actually reduce the financial inclusion used to keep it higher. So some people have actually the affordability as a We've actually seen uh, financial health being Yes, I've been an advocate for financial inclusion for as uh, good 15 years, but before that, also I started with a year of microcredit in uh, 2005, and that's the first time I came to Kenya. We were the ones actually trying to spur the mobile banking and uh, speaking to Kibaki to actually make Safaricom possible. So um, we've come a long way. In uh, 2006, we had 26% financial inclusion, it's today 8% new. Uh, but like you said, Ms. Jackson, um, it has been going with function and there's an issue of affordability and it has to do with the market structure of uh, financial services right now, uh, certainly on the digital financial services in the world banking. Um, given that one player has maybe 70% of the market and actually not making it a very competitive environment for actually uh, affordability to take place and actually on better services. So these are the types of discussions we're going to be having with the government here. Uh, because financial inclusion is a means to an end. It's not an end. So the whole point of me coming to these countries is actually making the railways uh, that actually work, that are actually droppable, that actually uh, get to even the farthest places in, in the country and then really service the poorest of the poor. So that we can actually add up services, and not only financial services, but in partnership with many other players in the market to actually make change in people's lives. Now, I have to say that um, Kenya did leapfrog tremendously, but what, what happens when you leapfrog is that um, other people copy what you did, but they improve it. And of course, Kenya being a leader for quite some time, we sort of rest on our laurels, and uh, we just, I would say, did not pay enough attention to a couple of very important things, the building blocks that we need to do this in a very uh, stable, and uh, an inclusive way. One of this is, like we just mentioned, the digital public infrastructure. Uh, the G20, uh, under the presidency of the Indian government, also outlined this issue of the DPIs, 
of the lower work we have a lot of work to do in the world. And here in, 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 in Kenya is really on this ID, having a foundational digital biometric unique ID that can actually help all the participants in the digital system, but also help not only the banking, finance, you know, your customer, etc., but also hopefully the health sector. Think about who are actually having a vaccination, not they're having your own sort of medical dossier in it, etc. We actually do a lot of work in the many countries in that perspective. Um, we've been having a lot of conversations with Maisha. We're going to be having a conversation tomorrow with the Ministry of Interior. Um, we would like to step back and have a little more thoughts on the Maisha Mamba, having a stakeholder discussion previous to that, having a not to be locked into one vendor. Um, we find it very important that data uh, safeguarding is actually in place. So we can have new discussions in this field. Uh, the other issue which is extremely important as well is the interoperable payment system. So the green finance, but also transit, so the households and the uh, farmers and uh, in terms of resilience, mitigation, mitigation. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we, we could do the right Mm. Well, I mean, he's bringing so many different kinds of expertise to the role, you know, but the same enthusiasm. Usually when we meet at 6.30 in the morning, it's usually the second or third meeting. Yes. I'll come to you for your wise words as always. I'm calling him Wasiri, but I, I know he was prof. Uh, <laughs> prof. Uh, and then finally to hear from Tony uh, about the substance of the study itself. And then we'd all go outside for a photo opportunity in front of the iconic caribou. And it was in 2006 that I came back again and we spoke with President Kibaki back again on actually letting this safari come adventure go. Um, and uh, what a journey has been. So today, where are we standing at? In 2006, we had 23% of people included in the financial sector. Now that is 79% according to the FINDEX numbers. Um, now, this has actually brought a lot of promising uh, developments. I mean, people being able to send money from the local areas into their, into the family members and earning money in the cities. It has been able to access much more the funds of friends, families, and foes, as it does to actually, in times of, uh, of, of, uh, of problems, having access to much more credit. Even actually, we've seen little by little people actually keeping some money behind on those wallets and actually increasing those savings. So it has actually given a completely different uh, dimension to the whole country. It would actually be, now, of course, a leader in these years. Now, the problem of being a leader is that you encounter the users later on, and I think that's why the launch of this report is so timely. Because, like Mr. Jackson just said, um, the developments have been fold, double folded. Finance possible, making health possible, making school enrollment possible, making all the type of e-commerce and uh, digitalization possible, making farmers enrollment possible. So uh, this is really at the heart and now uh, we would hope to actually uh, really um, have a good discussion on the Manisha number uh, programs and to do this in a way that is really sustainable and that is really has had Gaan we de bus in? We gaan de bus in en we moeten deze aan de geven. We doen de fast assessment. En alles is speaking. We are at the ICU. We have a medical facility and quality. It's not sad. So we are at level zero. When we give the fast assessment, the assessment requires, uh, the recommendations we made require money that we didn't have. Because as much as you are, working and getting paid. We didn't have money, we were not bankable. We didn't know how to do business, so we needed money. What is the cap? 
sorry? If you would use in pesa, half of what is your maximum? Is it 300,000? The maximum currently is 5,000 euros. So the maximum that the phone can hold at any given time. Oh no, for an Impesa wallet. On an Impesa wallet, yes. yes. That's my maximum. Yeah. 500,000 pesos. 5,000 euros. Yeah, so I'll commit and say yes, I commit to pay that. And I'll get this message that your request will be processed with those conditions there. I'll again now press the so point one to be one percent daily interest and three percent uh yes, yes, yes. Then at that juncture I'll press yes. That's what what is SE over data? No processing. Ah oh, processing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> processing of my data established on that whatever cash advance. Then I press one. But what what are, what are you consenting to? Uh, when a customer actually makes an application on our end, remember the digital revenue. And what this means for the future of women like Esther in access to finance. Well, first of all, um, I want to say I want to congratulate the Medical Credit Fund for all the work they've actually been doing. Like you said, I was in 2009 in Tanzania and they actually gave us uh, the first credits to a clinic mm -hmm. and um, it was amazing to listen from Esther today uh, she had the same sort of journey that this lady in Tanzania and uh, she wanted to improve and she got the safe care uh, like um, like an analysis of what they were doing and they could actually improve but she didn't have the money mm -hmm. you know so there was a lot of things they could do better to actually help people more people that were sick but you know one thing is to actually get the taking an assistance or you know the advice but the other thing is you know then you don't have the money mm -hmm. and then she did get the money through the medical credit fund and with that she's been able to subsequently one time after the other being able to improve everything she's been doing and now she does dental care she she can do lab tests here she can actually give people the medicine they need here it's a one-stop shop and they're gonna keep on you know growing and growing and I think this uh, like Esther said, you know, I'm being a woman, you don't go to a bank and get a lot of access to credit. So um, having someone that understands your needs as a, as a clinic is so important. And that's what Medical Credit Fund actually does. They understand uh, these entrepreneurs, they understand their needs, and they cannot pay, you know, all in one because their clients are not paying all in one because they don't have the money, you know, to just, you know, go to a doctor and actually pay it, you know. The, these clinics, they have clients that actually come with you know needs of actually curing their kid, but they don't have the money up front, so they also pay it in installments. So the need for this clinic to be able to also pay it in installments, and that understanding, and not like a bank will actually say you have to pay me per month so much money and so much fixed amount. Well, that's not the case, and that's not the reality. So understanding and denying needs is just so important. Um, I am so happy they've actually understood this and understanding the journey that these clinics are doing to actually grow and becoming even better every time. And, you know, uh, Esther was the owner of the Samsung Clinic. It's uh, just so um, um, ambitious. And at the same time, it's good that you go step by step because, you know, every new step has its own, uh, you know, challenges and uh, trying to get more clients into it is actually, you know, a challenge. So it's actually very nice to see how gradually uh, this amazing owner of this clinic, but like many other clinics in uh, not only Kenya but also in Tanzania, have been able to evolve and give very good care to their, to their you know, patients. Yeah. Good for more. Uh, you know, the patients you have to eat to get medication. Mm -hmm. So they bought, they brought food from home. Mm -hmm. um, so when we moved here, I got my children here, both of them. I recommended a few people. They also got their children here. Yeah. And um, 2021, unfortunately, I got COVID. Um, through the whole process, I had my treatment here, and. Uh, there was a time I had no one to leave the kitchen, so I came with them here. I got my medication in a different room. They were given a separate place. They did their drawings, they did their color. They were even offered snacks and food. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing how it felt like we are home and again we're in hospital, but well taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, I was really scared of, I'm still scared of injections. So when I used to come in with the kids, I just give a specific nurse. There's also that consistency of nurses here. 
and the you always see the same face the same face every single time so they knew my fear of injection so they would just take over for me get her medication get her injection her jobs then I pick it up from there I pass them for that mm -hmm. um, when I'm not around I don't have to be here for them to get medication um, the old place we used to walk with a card the card even says you have to bring it every visit you come but with here it's different we just show up I give my details my name or my mobile number identification number it shows me and my next of kin um, I don't have to be here to make payments wherever I am I can do it through my phone to include it for everyone yeah well Digital financial services is a very important part. Uh, let's be s say this thing to start with. I mean, financial inclusion is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Financial inclusion, and therefore digital financial services, has to serve giving health. And so what it's actually allowed is that, you know, any mother that is here, if she doesn't have the money up front to pay for that service, uh, you know, that doctor's appointment she just had, that she every day as she has money when she's in the market, she can pay, you know, without leaving her stall, where she's actually supposed to make money, otherwise she would actually lose from making money. Every day she can pay a little bit, allowing her to make that affordable for her. And then for the clinic, it makes them affordable for them to also pay that loan that she got, this cash advance that she got from the medical credit fund, you know, in different, you know, per day, as the moment that all these clients are paying them back. So this is this without digitization would not be possible. This flexibility would not have been possible. And we need flexibility. Uh, because people do not have it's not that they actually get a paycheck every month of so many shillings and they can actually, you know, redisperse all their needs. No. They get the money, you know, one day is five hundred shillings, the other day is nothing, and the other day is a thousand shillings. So going through these, you know, levels of uh, cash flow uh, of citizens and patients, we have to take care of that. Yeah.